Thank you for joining us for this very important open line tonight. We're talking about victims' rights. Next week is National Crime Victims' Rights Week. A lot going on to honor that, to celebrate that, to commemorate that. Uh, we talked about the Nashville service, which is Monday morning at 10 o'clock at Burnett Chapel Church of Christ. But these are going on across the state. What's the easiest way for folks to find out about one? Yeah, so the less challenging way is for them to jump on the Board of Parole's Facebook page. Mm -hmm. We have all 10 locations um, readily available for them to peruse through. And ultimately decide uh, which location they want to attend. And I just want to mention a couple of the cities that are in our viewing area. Nashville, of course, Clarksville, Murfreesboro, Cookville, Chatt or not Chattanooga is not in our viewing area, but also Columbia. So if you're in one of those cities you would like to attend, go onto the Facebook page of the uh, Board of Parole, find the information there. But no, it's all going on through the 9th uh, through the 13th through the end of next week. So that's uh, when to reach out here again, though, in Nashville, it's 10 o'clock, Burnett Chapel Church of Christ. You don't have to be a member there. Just right. come and and be with others who, who can uh, benefit from the service. I'm sure you've, you've seen a lot of healing just in that service over the years. Absolutely. Um, crime victims need to be encouraged. Mm -hmm. and, and I have found that once they get encouraged, they tend to encourage ah. other crime victims. They tend to support other crime victims because they have walked that journey, they have walked that trek themselves, and it allows them to say, hey, I know what you've been through, so I want to encourage you, I want to support you. And I'm sure there is healing in that, being able to reach out to other people as well. If folks need to, um, if they're finding a place where they need to be involved, if they have been the victim of a crime, if their offender may come up for parole, how can they make sure that they're not forgotten? Yeah, so we have uh, under state law uh, registration uh, process where uh, we register crime victims for parole hearings, for decisions of those parole hearings, as well as any potential release to the community in terms of supervision. Uh, we can get them registered over the telephone and or they can go out to the Board of Parole's webpage. Uh, there is a form that they could download. Um, get it sent to us. All the pertinent information um, is available for them to uh, get to us. And then what would happen once they're registered? Once they happens? are registered and the offender um, is uh, eligible for parole consideration uh, under state law, 30 days prior to the actual parole hearing date, we have to push out the actual notification. Uh, that notification uh, encompasses uh, the date of the hearing, the time of the hearing, the place of the hearing. Again, all necessary information uh, so that crime victims can make an informed decision about whether or not they plan to be engaged or not. And if, and if someone gets that notification as part of victim services, then what do you all do? They, they notify us and say, hey, I got this notification. I would like to attend the parole hearing. Um, parole hearings are open to the public and it's certainly open to crime victims. And so we um, engage them and where they need to be. We offer video conferencing across the state mm. uh, in seven different cities, including Nashville, where uh, the victims and their family members do not have to go inside the institution unless they choose to. Uh, and so because of safety reasons, uh, we encourage them to attend via video conferencing so that they don't necessarily have to be in the same room with the offender, again, sure. unless they choose to. Unless they choose to, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's so very smart, so yeah. very smart. And we mentioned um, before we were talking about how victims have, have not always been a part of the process. In fact, they're not part of the process in some states when it comes to the Board of Parole. And that is my understanding that wow. um, victims' voices are not heard um, in parole hearings, but in Tennessee, uh, they, are. they are heard, and we want them to be heard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what, what do you hope comes from next week um, if people choose to attend a service? What do you hope they get from it, walk away from? Hope. I, I want yeah. them to have that, that hope um, into the services that we are providing for them. We want them to uh, be able to uh, compartmentalize uh, that um, although they may not ever be able to seek true justice, but they can be involved in that process. And so it's all about hope. Mm -hmm. um, it's about trusting uh, the service that we're providing for them as well. You're going to be honored in Washington next week. Yes. Tell us about that. Yes, yeah, so I have been nominated and will receive the 2018 National Crime Victims Rights Award in Washington, D.C. on Friday, April the 13th. And it is uh, an honor and it's humbling uh, for uh, persons to recognize both my work and worth in working with crime victims. And so I'm just honored uh, to be able to go to Washington, D.C. It is um, an honor again, uh, but it is an award that um, I don't take lightly. Yeah. Um, it is an award that uh, I share uh, with the Board of Parole in addition to the victim coordinators with the Tennessee Department of Correction who work with me. I cannot uh, get my work done. <laughs> 
without having their support. Takes a village, right? Absolutely. Congratulations. Thank you very much. What an much. amazing honor. Thank you. Not the only person from this area to be honored in Washington. Pastor Span, yeah. tell us about your usher. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Caleb Engel yeah. is one of our young men at, at church. He was the one who uh, wrestled the gunman mm -hmm. down and, and uh, he was recognized in Laverne as uh, it, person of the week or whatever right. and it, it was a great honor there and then uh, Washington got in touch with him and he received last week the Congressional Medal of Honor mm. and uh, it was a uh, just an, uh, you know, a lifetime thing. Just like sure. you're so well deserving of what you're getting, but it's something that is such an honor. And, sure. and Caleb is extremely he's quiet. Extremely humble. With, yes. Yes, he, yes, he he doesn't like the attention, but he's getting a little more comfortable with it now. <laughs> could, could I say one thing before we Most go? Certainly. Uh, there are so many people who have written us and have prayed for us, and they've even sent money to the church. Uh, and, and too many for us to return mm -hmm. uh, back. I just want to thank everyone for what they've done and, and how they've, and it has, it has strengthened us. You said hope. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, we have been provided with hope through a lot of those letters and those prayers, and we're just very grateful. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. That's so very good to hear. We're mm -hmm. going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll wrap things up. Stay with us. Are you tired of